Okay, for these problems we're doing the reverse that we just did before. Uh, in the previous problem, we were given the formula and we calculated the sum. Now this time they're giving us the sum. We want to go back and write it in sigma notation. So we have to look at the pattern that's happening on each of these and we have to come up with some kind of formula that will generate all these terms here. So first, of course, we need a sigma notation. And you can use k equals or i equals, it doesn't really matter. Uh, which one that you have here. Just follow what the instructions tell you for doing these online. It'll tell you what letter to use. I'll use K here, but in the notes I can use I. It doesn't matter. Okay, we'll start K out at... Now, if we look down here, we notice that we have part of this that's changing all the way through. We have a 1 that's starting here, and it's ending at a 15. So that's going to tell me the numbers I'm going to put on my summation. I'm starting K at 1. I'm going to go to 15. Now, the 5 that's on top, that's always appearing no matter what, so we don't need a variable for the top. On the bottom, I have a 1 plus something that's changing all the way through, so I'm going to put 1 plus k down here, and this right here should be my, my answer. Okay, so your answer is going to be in the form of uh, sigma notation. You can always check to make sure you get the same thing. You can put 1 in there for k, and I get the first term, then I put a 2 in there, keep on going all the way up to 15 will be the last one. Therefore, this is the correct answer to generate that sum. Let's take a look at this one down here. Now this one, again, we're going to do a summation. I'll use a K on this one. And what I have happening here is I have a... Now I have pluses and minuses happening, so I'll have to take care of that. But if I ignore all the signs, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is written as 1, but I could also write that as 7 over 7. So I'm going to go from 1 to 7 on this example I have here. We need to do alternating signs, which means that in order to do alternating sign, we showed a problem earlier with that, you have to put a negative one raised to the k. So if the first one was positive, we probably would have to make this like k plus one, because when we put one in there, we get an even number, but in this case, the first one is negative, so this is okay just to leave it as k. If I put one in here, negative one to the first power is positive one, and then it's squared, so it's plus, then minus, plus. So that's going to take care of all the plus and minus signs. Then I have on the bottom, a 7 is always going to be the same all the way through. Again, this one can be written as 7 over 7. And then I'm just going to put my k value on, on top there, and then I'll take care of it. If I put a 1 in here for the first one, I get negative 1 7th, which is what I have. Make k equal 2, negative 1 squared is positive, so that would be a plus there. And then there would be a 2 7 here, and that's going to continue all the way down to the very last term. So again, this would be the correct summation notation to generate the sum.